This week, government released the quarterly crime stats. Amid a spike in violent crime in most parts of the country, they showed that more than 6,000 people have been murdered in just the past three months. Many of us have become numb to the figures, but people from a community on Gauteng's East Rand are drawing a line in the sand. Disillusioned by an absence of policing in their area, they've taken to the streets, determined to drive out the criminals. Their actions raise important questions. Here's Claire. The criminals are already on the road. How many firearms are here? Your firearm remains concealed. And whenever your gun is pulled out, your gun must be 45 degrees down. I'm you guys. It's I'm Friday asking night you on Johannesburg's East Rand. A 30-strong group of men and women have ditched their weekend plans, raided their cupboards for camouflage, and come together to stand up against their biggest enemy, crime. We don't want any stories. Let us be professional. But don't negotiate with those criminals. They call themselves Tata Zonke, which means suggestively, take them all. We go as a team. We fight as a team. We win as a team. These streets of phosphorus that are being hijacked by the criminals, we will force the crime to go down. We're not asking them. We'll, we, we, we own the streets. In the face of what they feel is a lackluster response from the police to their plight, this group is highly organized, highly mobilized, and putting their own cars, guns, and necks on the line. Lie, lie down! Lie down! Lie down! Lie down! Lie down! But who and what is Tata Zonke? How far are they willing to go? And are they crossing a line? Living in Johannesburg's Far East Rand is not for the faint-hearted. With a 9% increase in reported murders in the province last year, Ekuruleni is the leader in Gauteng, with Fosloris officially the kidnapping capital of South Africa. A number of anti-crime groups have sprung up in different townships around the country, taking on cases and squeezing suspected criminals. In Katlehong, Tokoza, and Fosloris, known as Katoris, a group of men and women came together and drew the line. Our township was burning because of these thugs, of these faceless people. Uh, they were harassing the community, they were taking people's cars. To them it was just business as normal. Mandla Ngambule spent 23 years in the police and now runs his own business. In Tata Zonke, he's the supreme commander. While it is a registered security company, they see themselves as part of the community policing forum, meant to bridge the gap between police and the people. CPF is the mother body of all the patrollers, but with us, we are there to give the cops a backup. We are part of CPF, but we are more ruthless than the CPF. We don't negotiate with criminals. We give them what they, they, they ask for. We are there to fight fire with fire. Especially when it comes to the GPV cases. Mm. That's where we don't take <laughs> We go there within seconds. An operation like this needs funding. We do everything out of our own pockets. The gear that we are wearing, the firearms that we are using, we bought it ourselves. Mandla is well aware that getting his hands dirty fighting criminals on the street might one day mean that he won't come back home. As a father, husband and son, he has a lot to lose and a lot to fight for. This place is very dangerous. Even the police, they will only come in here if the Tata Zonke having recovered a vehicle or a victim. They will never come here. 
Commander Bush, as he's known in the organization, grew up herding cattle and falling in love with the bush. For Tata Zonke, he covers the notorious stretch of no man's land on the edge of Katoris called Zonke Zizwe. Here, he's helped to track and rescue several hijacking victims. This is about 10 square kilometers of nothing. So if you are here or with criminals, your life, you must just pray. What are the challenges of fighting crime or patrolling yeah. in this area? Maximum discipline. When we are here, you don't speak, you keep quiet. When you step on the bush, you don't, you don't step on the bush as if you are coming off an elevator. We command you, you follow the command. Simpiwe Kumalo runs a construction and renewable energy company. It was when his wife was hijacked that he drew the line. They took all the valuables, laptops, cell phones, so they cleaned their bank account. He was so fed up with the lack of action on her case that he joined Tata Zonke, bringing with him a history of struggle and defiance. At the back of my mind, I wanted to say, okay, what happens when a person is hijacked, they take away your, th your, your freedom. You can't do anything. So crime in general um, takes away your freedom. Tata Zonke was forged from the fire of the notorious 1990s, when these streets saw some of the most violent conflicts in the country's transition to democracy. The freedom we enjoy in this country was paid for by blood and tears. And this street, Kumalo Street, was at the center of that struggle, something that still inspires the members of Tata Zonke. It is the idea of securing the gains that we have got after the 1994 elections. We must now fight and engage every resources that we have in making sure that we defend the freedom. Give us your full names, please. Sushio Kotrin. As a young boy, Simpiwe ran the streets as a member of the self-defense unit and eventually became one of the youngest people to be granted amnesty before the historic Truth and Reconciliation Commission for his subversive acts in the liberation struggle. Every time they launch an attack or every time Bazo, they will defend, I should go first, then I have to make sure that there are no police around that area, then to make sure that the guns are safety stored and to clean them. That was my role. Looking back now, as an adult man, and you look back to that experience, it should have not happened. But the good side of things is that then it nurtured us to take care of our communities. Um, because we've been there, we've defended the community when we were young. They have a hotline number and a Facebook page. No crime is too big or too small. They started out with hijackings. Now it's housebreaking, even petty crimes. But is Tata Zonke going beyond the call of duty for a community policing forum? Are they on the right side of the law? Do they have a rightful space to operate? So the, the law actually allows communities to organize themselves, but they must work with the police. In the African Policing Civilian Oversight Forum, Temba Masuku has seen groups like these mushroom around the country. So your community patrollers, your neighborhood watch, they don't have special powers. So they cannot engage in covert operation. They cannot investigate crime. They cannot search. They cannot enter into people's homes. So they're forced to obey the law while trying to be creative about meeting real needs. Some of those limitations are designed to respect everyone's rights. Because every, everybody has got a right to, to their dignity. Tonight's patrol has been planned for weeks. Some members join the operation straight from work. Good evening, Tengus. Who's going to pray for us? Amen. It's Friday night and the beginning of the weekend can be very unpredictable for our group. It means leaving nothing to chance and making sure that they're also mentally prepared for the battle that lies ahead. We're not going out there to play. 
Those criminals are not playing with the community, so we must stamp our authority there. We're going to saturate that place. In the streets, they want to make their presence felt. The commander's unit receives a distress call via the hotline. Guys, let's, let's move. There's armed robbery in progress. Come, guys, let's, let's move. By the time we arrive, the suspects are gone. Not a case of robbery as it turns out, but a man terrorizing a woman because of a dispute with her brother. When the police officers arrive, they suggest a way forward. You go to the police station, you open the case. Or either you go to a, a court. And a court of law means a protection order. A visibly unhappy commander cannot hide his frustration. We wanted to go there ourselves now, but seeing the cops uh, are taking a, a soft stance, we said, no, you must just listen. So about 30 members of the Tata Zonke team are patrolling the night tonight, and their aim is to stop and search anyone that looks suspicious. They're also checking cars that are potentially hijacked, and tonight we have the police with us. For Tata Zonke, crime fighting also means meeting social needs, being the fathers, uncles and aunts when those are not around. How old are you? 16. 16 left, right? 16 left. Go away. Go home. You're taking drugs when you are doing drugs. In an abandoned car parked by a tavern, a shocking sight. Where's the, where's the mother? The mother eventually makes her way outside, her baby alone. Hello? Hello? Are you okay? The mood shifts again. Baba, 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 Baba. Mamela, upuziru tagiwe, Mamela. As the night winds down, there's no compromise because the mission is bigger than themselves, their limited resources and powers. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.